This video I've entitled, Why Get Into Amateur Radio? So let's answer the question, why get into amateur radio? Some people have the impression that ham radio was just a bunch of old guys talking about ham radio in their basement and using a bunch of old outdated equipment. I also get comments that it's a very expensive hobby. So let's put some myths to bed. First of all, the nice thing about amateur radio is there's operators from 8 to 80. And why yes, we can use Morse code, and some people do use the older equipment, there is a lot of newer equipment out there as well. And you can build your ham shack as simple as a handheld radio, two radio in an ammo box, or maybe just a couple radios on a shelf. Ham radio shacks, as they're called, can range from the small shack to a medium-sized shack to something quite involved. So what can you do on ham radio? You could hear a young ham radio operator talking to somebody in England about the weather, while somebody else may be trying to get that elusive DX contact. And there might be another ham radio operator that's doing public service work for Forest Fire. Ham radio is a wide mix of fun, public service, friendship, and conversation. Let's look at the technology involved in ham radio. Yes, there's a lot of old equipment out there, and it's working just fine. But some of the new radios are using some technology that you will see nowhere else. For now, if we go back in history, like for instance the modern day cell phone, in the 50s and 60s we would call that a phone patch. One of these type devices would literally be connected from the phone line to the radio. These started to become prevalent in the 50s and 60s, way before the cell phone. You could have a serviceman talking on a field radio, connecting through some links, and you get the phone call on the other end, the early version of the cell phone. Another example is the internet itself. Most people will tell you that the internet came about in the early 90s, and that is true. However, ham radio used a thing called packet, that started in the late 70s, where you would take a computer, connect it to a terminal node controller, and send that over radio. Messages and information could be sent for extremely long distances. So there are a lot of ham radio operators that are innovators, as well as hams that just want to see that old equipment run. Amateur radio is for anyone who likes to communicate with wireless technology, or just likes to experiment with radios. We can talk to people next door, or people across the country, as well as astronauts in outer space. There are numerous amateur radio events. Some you can take part in in the confines of your own home. Other events like Kids Day, Ham Fest, and public service events are all events that you can meet a lot of people. In the United States, there's about 800,000 hams, and it's increasing every day. Ham radio operators use a variety of frequencies, as well as a wide variety of modes, from simple amplitude modulation all the way to digital communications. In the United States, the FCC allocates frequency for amateur radio use. These frequencies range from just above the AM broadcast band to the gigahertz band. Most ham radio operators operate between 3 and 30 megahertz, which is commonly referred to as the shortwave band, and use the ionosphere to bounce signals all over the world. The neat thing is, non-hams listen to ham radio transmissions on a shortwave receiver or a scanner. Amateur radio operators broadcast in a very similar way to the FM radio station that you listen to. The only difference is ham radio is a two-way conversation, usually swapping information back and forth in a small group, and sometimes a larger group. Some of these larger groups are called nets. Most new hams get their start with these nets on VHF, or FM, using battery-operated transceivers. In the case of VHF-FM, there's usually an FM repeater owned by a local radio club. These repeaters receive on one frequency and transmit on another frequency, thus to give the ham radio operator extended range on VHF, as most handheld radios are very low power. One neat thing about VHF radio is sometimes you can talk to the International Space Station. Ham radio is actually a backup communication system on the International Space Station. To become an amateur radio operator, you'll need a license. Overall, the amateur radio license exam is very easy. The test covers basic electronic theory, as well as amateur radio rules and regulations. Study guides are available, as well as the internet, to practice for your amateur radio exam. Keep in mind, there's no age restriction for an amateur radio exam. In the case of the United States, there are three exams. The technician, the general class license, and the amateur extra. The higher in class you go, the more privileges you get. For both the technician and the general class license, there are 35 question exam. In the case of the extra exam, that's a 50 question exam. To find an exam in your area, go to the ARRL website. Now once you have passed your license, now it's time to look at equipment. 
I do have an earlier video on purchasing your first ham radio. Suffice to say, there's a lot of different radios to choose from, from handhelds, mobile radios, as well as base radios, and just about as many antennas. One place to find used equipment is a HamFast, basically a ham radio operator's flea market. You can also find a list of those on the ARL website as well. And above all, listen. Some amateur radio bands can be picked up on a pretty inexpensive scanner. My next recommendation would be contact an amateur radio operator. For all intents and purposes, the amateur radio operator's phone book is qrz.com. Most ham radio operators are more than willing to tell you their stories about amateur radio. And that's why you should get into amateur radio. You can do some public service work. You can talk to people all over the world. And you will have a lot of fun. I hope this video has been helpful. And 7-3s from N9LVS.